When I first started doing response videos, I made a bucket list of content creators that I wanted to do a response video to. These particular content creators were all rather <clears throat> dense, but I believed at some point I would be able to catch them when they made a video that was current and equally stupid. Today is no exception, as you noticed from the thumbnail, we are dealing with Feminist Frequency's own Anita Sarkakakakakakizian. Take it away, Anita. At their annual BlizzCon event in 2014, the wildly successful game studio Blizzard Entertainment showed off a new game they had in the works called Overwatch. And from that first reveal it was clear, the appeal of Overwatch resided in its cast of characters, a diverse assortment of heroes each with unique traits and abilities. The roster revealed at BlizzCon included men and women, sentient robots, and super intelligent gorillas. I promise you I had intended to cut that original part out, but it is relevant to the next bit, certainly the next sentence that Anita says, so I had to leave it in. However, for all the apparent variety and diversity in the heroes Blizzard showed off at the game's debut, there wasn't much diversity to be seen in the body types represented by the female heroes. Straws clutching you. But I've no doubt you're going to provide some adequate points to validate your arguments. To promote body positivity and realistic body images in a video game with robots and aliens. The male characters introduced that day included the towering knight Reinhardt, the sturdy engineer Torbjorn, the agile archer Hanzo, and the hulking simian scientist Winston, among others. Let's face it, we all know where you're going to go with this. You're now going to go ahead and talk about the female body depictions in video games. We all know this, not only because of what you just said about the men, but because your previous versions were obsessing, you're obsessing, over female bottoms. And, of course, Batmans. I am now half tempted to, instead of using my regular backdrop, this backdrop, replacing it with this, thank you Skeptic Llama, or this. But I might just instead put this on the TV instead, because I don't think anyone's going to stick around and watch with just that. But it's going to stay on the TV for the remainder of this video. Please though continue making your utterly predictable point. The five female characters introduced consisted of the slender adventurer Tracer. Yes, and if memory serves, you're such a big fan of Tracer. But continue, tell me about the other four women, please. The slender healer Mercy, the slender support character Symmetra, the slender sniper Widowmaker, and the slender but well-armored security chief Farah. You're so desperate to moan about something that you completely overlook the fact that they are all very talented, very skilled, very interesting characters. But you focus on the fact that they have similar body types. Do you really think that in this particular type of game they're going to have, I don't know, this? This is, well, this could actually be a tank, I guess, in certain raids. Never mind, continue. Make your point. Overwatch was hardly alone in having all of its female characters share a similar physique. In Ultra Street Fighter 4, characters such as Dalsam, Hakan, E. Honda, Rufus, and Vega represent a significant range of male body types. Yeah, that, that's, that's an array of body types there. As a side, I preferred Blanca. Looking at the roster of female characters, however, while some may be a bit taller than others or have slightly larger thighs, not one of them represents a notable departure from the slender body type that has been established as the standard of conventional female attractiveness. You know, I thought you were going to pick up on the massive lack of racial diversity in those particular characters you're displaying on the screen. But no, you had to go with, Err, one has thunder thighs, but that's not enough. How will I ever relate to a character that doesn't look like me, that isn't obese like Honda? but female. <clears throat> My apologies, I lost control there for a second and started channeling virtue signaler Will Wheaton for his nerdist Star Wars video. My bad. Similarly, when we look at the champions on offer in the hugely popular MOBA League of Legends, we see the designers employing a wonderful range of body shapes and proportions across dozens of male characters, from the classic muscular warrior physique of Tarek, to the hefty beer belly of Gragas, to the cartoonishly disproportionate body of Dr. Mundo. There isn't any one male body type that is presented as the standard default male body type, and the value of these characters is definitely not connected to their sexual desirability. Ah, League of Legends. Quality game. I know someone that plays that a lot. Her name is Prince Judah. Go subscribe to her and pester her to make more videos. Now as far as your characters, the male ones, go, they're all cartoony. They're all disproportionate. They don't represent men at all. Yes, there is a standard body type, the muscular, tall, broad-shouldered, but notice, men do come in all different shapes and sizes, much like women. Just focus on that instead, rather than dismissing the fact that men aren't really being represented here either. As a small side before we continue into your utterly redundant points you make, I do want to take the opportunity to point out that you are not being very honest when it comes to combat games and representation of body types. Yes, there are men with different types of body types and unlike women they don't exist in those games, but that's because of functionality men are capable of performing at larger sizes in certain situations. 
nations more so than women. You have compared, for example, Honda to that of, I don't know, Chun-Li. Hardly the same fight style if you notice from the game. Of course, the game does exaggerate it ever so slightly, which you would know if you played the games, which I don't think you do. I think you're like your Twitch channel where you just sit on the side and commentate while someone else plays. But when we look at the female heroes, there's nothing approaching the diversity we see on the male side of the roster. Maybe not as far as body type goes, but dang, those girls are hot. I would love to play with them. I'm not even kidding. One of those weird trends, when I play like Saints Row 3 or World of Warcraft, which I used to play, I would play as a female character. I found it more interesting. Oh no, but they don't have bigger hips or a muffin top or saggy tits. More representation. There are a few noteworthy variations from the standard. Illawi is somewhat more muscular than many of the female characters. So a different body type then. Jinx has smaller breasts. Doesn't this also fall into the category of a different body type? There's the cute gnome like Tristana. While I don't want to repeat myself for a third time, that is also another body image. You cannot say this is not when you earlier put a dwarf on the bloody screen. So far, your comparisons from Street Fighter were poor because they were, for the men's side certainly, from cultural backgrounds. And for this, you're taking a fantasy game and making even worse comparisons with fantasy characters that have different body types. You're not doing very well at the moment, Anita. But the overwhelming majority of female characters make it clear that a slender figure with prominent breasts is viewed as the standard for female character design. Hey Anita, if you think this is problematic, you should play Saints Row 3, where you can be male or female and choose to give them bigger tits if they're female or a bigger package if they're male. Likewise in Dota 2, male heroes can be handsome or comical, outlandish or grotesque, while female heroes are mostly relegated to being standard humanoid characters with conventionally attractive facial features. If they're not attractive, they get made attractive, but if they're attractive, then you need unattractive to, you know, represent. It's almost like you and people like you can't take a joke unlike men who are more than willing to take the hit and have all these unattractive and non-representative characters because they don't care, they want to play the bloody game. Small disclaimer, that's not to say for one second that there are not female gamers out there that don't just want to play the bloody game and think this is equally retarded. Where are all the female rock creatures, skeletal priests? Making sandwiches for the men, cleaning the house, serving the patriarchy basically. Whatever this thing is. Slark. Do try your best not to laugh at his appearance while asking what he is. This isn't just an issue in fighting games, MOBAs, and other titles that give players a range of characters to choose from. Female characters across the board are often limited to that same specific body type. It's almost as if that particular body type, even though you've claimed that there are no others but the one, even though you've shown images of there being others, is the preferred body type. I mean, I know game development has come so far in developing body types, but that extra inch on the hip could be really hard to make or give a fuck about. It's as if male characters are free to embody whatever physique best communicates their personality or abilities, but when it comes to the designs of female characters, that kind of imagination and creativity often doesn't seem to exist. Wow, that is a considerable amount of overthinking of characters for someone who has probably most likely not played the games or read any source material whatsoever. It's almost as if you don't really care and are only in this to make money by complaining about non-issues. Hmm. Rather than seeing such an exciting range of female characters, we mostly get the same body type over and over again. One designed to be sexually appealing to the presumed straight male player. It was only a matter of time before she brought up the straight man as the player, the person who would take control of the over-sexualized female and make her do what he wanted. That's patriarchy. Fuck yeah. This reliance on the same body type for so many female characters isn't just boring, it's harmful. It links our value as human beings within the culture to our desirability to men, and it reinforces our culturally influenced ideas about who gets to be considered desirable and who doesn't. This is not something that is solely exclusive to video games and how it affects our minds. This could be applied to all of society. There is nothing wrong with someone going out of their way to try and reach for someone way above their average. And if video games influence that, so be it. It's not like people who play video games are going to all end up with the hottest woman on the planet. We are not all looking for someone who is so attractive way out of our league. We're looking for someone who we can connect with, if we are looking for someone at all. I love how you think this is also only something that affects men. 
The problem is exacerbated by the fact that when we do see representations of women with different body types, they're often presented as a joke, as in Fat Princess. Or they're pathologized and presented as a twisted transgression of the established feminine ideal, as in the case of the evil lesbian psychopath Joe Slade in Dead Rising. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy that says the most inappropriate thing, but those two characters looked amazing and hilarious. The fact that fat women and women with different body shapes aren't featured in these worlds reinforces the false notion that these women are less valuable and less worthy of recognition than those women whose bodies come closer to matching the cultural beauty standard. That first bit, I'm just going to play it again. The fact that fat women and women with different body shapes are- Wow, so you separated fat women from different body shapes as if fat isn't a different body shape to begin with. Congratulations, whoever wrote your script is a moron. Fire them. Have you reached out to any gamers and gotten solid information and studies to back up this, this insecurity problem you are talking about? I don't think you have because there's nothing linked below, just disabled comments and ratings as per usual with a feminist frequency video because of the hate and the trolls and the misogynists. Maybe you should though. Maybe you should reach out to them and see what they think. And I bet I would put money on it that they have a differing opinion to you because you don't understand gamers and have been proven to not understand gamers for years. These limitations on creativity when it comes to female characters don't stop with body type. We also don't see the same range of ages commonly represented as we do with male characters. Yeah, back when I used to play World of Warcraft as a water mage called Moist, I had this same problem. On the Draenor server, I, I, I didn't have an old character. So what did I do? I turned everyone into a penguin. Finally, equality was achieved, problem solved. The moral of this story, Blizzard, is give me a decrepit avatar with saggy tits and a zimmer frame that is incontinent wearing an adult nappy, or I will turn everyone into a fucking penguin. It's not unheard of to see male soldiers, fighters, and heroes who appear to be in their 40s, 50s, and even older. I don't really know what your point is here, because I know for a fact men's bodies are slightly more robust, in the sense that they can serve in the military for longer, and I think there's an edge of realism in this respect. I'm not saying women are not, let's face it, it's unknown. But women do retire younger than men, certainly in the UK, because they are more inclined to pick up injuries and illnesses as they get older sooner than men on average. I don't know how this affects video games, and I don't even know why I'm still talking. Before we continue, I just want to quickly point out that each of those characters that is old and male has a story, a very good story, and I would like you, encourage you, Anita, to actually go and look at them. Playable female characters, on the other hand, are almost always young, and it's for the same reason that so many of them have the same body type. They're intended to be sexually appealing to straight male players. I really want to focus on the fact that younger women are more athletic than older women, and older men are able to retain a certain level of athleticism for longer. That's not to say older women can't, but they are more inclined to pick up injuries. Instead, I'm going to focus on the straight male element again. You imply that, what, the majority of gamers are straight men, and they're getting their sexual desires from avatars. So what? Not everyone is like this, and you have yet to provide any source to back up this claim, so I will do what I do with anything that is asserted, and simply dismiss it as utter bullshit. The result is that we have plenty of representations of male characters who communicate that men can continue to be active, vital, and powerful over the course of their lives. You make that sound like it's a bad thing. Men and women would want to surely be as powerful as they can be for as long as they can before they have to start to rely on medicine to supplement the losses that occur as we age. Meanwhile, the absence of older playable female characters wrongly suggests that women's value is tied directly to their beauty and youth, and that when they're older, that value is all used up. Why not have an older female character game commissioned then? I actually recommend it, and then see if it can be marketed to the larger audience to get them interested in an older female character. That is the simple option. Rather than bleat on about the fact that, oh no, men have this, men have that, even though men are the largest, certainly in these particular genres, the largest demographic that play these games, and like female characters because they like control over their bodies, let's make a game with an older female and try and market it to them to get them interested in controlling an older woman, because that's what young guys want. There aren't many good examples of prominent positive representations of women with different body types in major contemporary games. Oh god, it's like comic books all over again. Oh no, in this we don't have equal representation of every possible group. We must complain until Marvel kowtow and start giving us what we want. You talk about major contemporary games, most of which are franchises. What do you want them to do? Press factory reset and redo the whole thing to be all-inclusive to every possible demographic on the planet? Ugh. 
It would take a year at least to program half the bloody Tumblr genders. Let's go back to Overwatch for a moment. Yay. Since that initial reveal, a few female heroes have been added to the roster. There's Mei and Zarya, both of whom have body types that are notably different from those of the originally announced female characters. Well that's fantastic, they look pretty cool. Did Feminist Frequency spearhead a campaign against Blizzard to get them to make female bodies more representative of all body images that are realistic and unrealistic? Anna, reporting for duty. And more recently, Blizzard announced the game's next hero, Anna, who's both an older woman and a woman of color. So not only are there games with different body types, but they also have the older woman that you have been complaining about, therefore rendering this whole video pointless to begin with. You had points, and non-points, and no points, and walk away with nothing, and will inevitably have a video with thousands of thumbs down because you've basically not made a single damn point in however many minutes this video ran for. These characters are welcome and encouraging additions, but really they're just a start. Game developers need to continue actively working towards creating the same range and diversity of female body representations that we see among male characters. When female characters' bodies are liberated from the need to uphold narrow, limiting cultural beauty standards, the resulting range of representations can not only make games themselves more interesting, it can encourage us to see all women as the desirable, valuable, autonomous, fully human individuals that we are. Shut up, Anita. I'm a big fan of Bearing's Bottom. <laughs> <laughs>